911, what is your emergency? CHC with a uh, transfer for a suspicious woman with two juveniles, Alta Sierra near Gibbon Elaine. Got on the line. Thank you. Hi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, so what exactly is happening at Alta Sierra and Gibbon? Um, there's, oh gosh, sorry, it's just been frantic here. Um, there was a loose dog um, on my, off of my street on Gibbon, and so I slowed down as I was driving out. And I realized there's also a woman with two kids, and um, I asked if it was her dog, and she was really weird about it, like, no. And then she like, grabbed the kids by the arm, and was like, yanking mm -hmm. them, they're like four and five. Uh, then I picked up my son and came back, and um, she was walking on Alta Sierra on this really curvy road on the wrong, on the same side as the traffic, and people had turned on the lights because of the dog, and so they stopped to help the dog. And this woman, like, walked out into the street with these kids during this whole traffic confusion with this dog thing. I couldn't believe she was out there with kids. And um, anyway, then we watched her go up a driveway, and we're like, okay, cool, she must live there. And the woman let her into the house. Well, now I'm okay. off my son at home, and I come back, and she's walking up off the scene again with the kids. And she's got one on her shoulders and one holding her hand. It's just, she's not well. Um, hi, uh, my name is Amy and I live in Alta Sierra. Um, a lady just came to my door with her small children. And is she wearing a black and beanie? And is she wearing a black beanie and gray pants? What? Is she wearing a black beanie on her head? Okay, and are the children in with white masks? I got a call about they something. They didn't have masks. Oh, okay. I got a call about her out to here and near Gibbony. Children aren't properly. I'm sorry, what? I got a call about her walking down the street near Alta Sierra and Gibbony. Oh yeah, I thought this came up to my door past Gibbony, came up to my door, but somebody was following her. And she told me not to call the cops. And she wanted me to take her somewhere safe. She said, they're hurting my kids. And she was really scared and didn't want to. She asked me to take her to Nevada. I go, Nevada City? Uh -huh. She's like, no, the state line. What's your address? So, and then, and then somebody actually really was following her. Somebody followed her, drove up in my driveway while she was on my porch. No, that was, the, that, that was the person I was talking to. She had seen them walking for quite a while and was concerned for the children's well-being. She called 911. She told me she pulled up. Okay. So that was just my 911 caller, but what is your address just for an idea of where this happened? Can you have any to clear? Temporary suspicious circumstances, Alta Sierra and Gibbony. I'll head that way, although I think Paul 50 would be close to where you're clear. One Paul 7, copy your starting that way. One Paul 7, she was last seen leaving the residence of one on Alta Sierra Drive saying that she needed a ride to Nevada and stating that her and her children were in danger. Uh, so Kenny and uh, myself, all of this will be around. She was saying she was on Alta Sierra Drive, but headed towards the country club.
Copy and also Sarah. Scotty, 1-12-50, we're going to have one at gunpoint. She has a knife. 1-12-50, copy one at gunpoint. She has a knife. Code 33. Last unit going 97 to 9. Copy your request for additional. One Sam nine, do you copy? One Paul seven, do you copy code three? Affirmative. And their last update was names at Alta Sierra. Copy names at Alta Sierra. Is there you know traffic? Taser deployment. Copy taser deployment. Copy, Sage Medical shots fired. One Edward Nine, do you copy? One Edward Nine, Nevada County, do you copy? En route. One Edward Nine, copy, en route, shots fired. County one seven nine, what's their exact twenty? Names at Alta Sierra, names at Alta Sierra. You're not in trouble or anything like that. Oh, I know what you did to my baby. I'm not going to touch your babies, but I need you to put your knife away. Don't County hurt Paul, we're gonna have my one baby. Point. She has a knife. Don't I'm not going to hurt your babies. Hey, I'm not going to hurt your babies. I'm not going to. Everyone knows every single face, hey. every single name. Hey. Something happens to me and my babies. Okay. Everyone in the whole world. Hey, listen. Ah, we're not. Ah, hold ah, up. Hold up. Hey. We're not talking. Everyone knows what you're going to do. You can't say that. I'm not saying anything. I, I just want to help you out. They know who you are. I just want to help Everyone out. Everyone knows who you are. You can't hide. Okay. God. Okay. Allah, Hold up. Back up, Zoe. Zoe, back you want to back up? Don't Zoe. Don't fucking get near my baby. Zoe, don't. Don't you fucking hey. near my baby. We're not. Zoe, you want to back up? Zoe. Hey, I need you to put the knife down. Just fuck. talk. Just talk to us. No, I don't have anything to say. Everyone talk to us. Who you are. Talk to us. Fucking knows who you are. Listen. Just talk to up. us. Just to talk to us. They have all that so kill me now. I don't want to kill you. Because you they won't find out the show. Don't. Don't you oh. find hey. out. Hey. Got anyone pull 50 shots fired. Shots fired. Let go of the knife. Hey, don't back. Hey, back up, back up. Take a breather. Hey. Put her at gunpoint. Put her at hold the kids. Hey, 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 Joey, come here. Hey. Hold up, hold up.
Charge me as soon as it went off. Okay, get your medical bag ready. Okay. Okay. Put the knife down. Put the knife down. We want to get your medical help. Yeah. Here, let's get some that. Hey, inside my bag, in the bottom bag is a green little bag. Sit down. Lay down. Put the knife down. Let's go. It's good. I don't have gloves on. Okay. Front or back? Oh. Oh. Man. Okay, get, let's get pressure bandages. Yeah, let me get some. You have gloves in here, bro? Yeah. Pressure bandage. Okay. Looking at the shoulder. Some sort of hole. One of those. I need those. Open that up. We got. Hey, find the entrance. They're right here on the belly. County 150 sending medics. Oh, where? Hold up. Jet one up on the top arm okay. somewhere. Hang on. I can't see. I don't know which Hold side on. it is. Okay. Yeah. That one, we're just up. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. I got pressure off that one. Hang on. Is the it's back there. The is back there. It's underneath her. Uh... Yeah, I'm the shooter. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. We're going to call you guys in. She's got powdered on. So, right? She has a couple of guns. She has uh, two that we found on the back. There's one on the arm, and there's a couple on the chest. What, what was the weapon? Was she, is she dangerous? She had a knife. Oh, the knife's away from her. She charged in. We shot. Okay, all right. That's, that's it. I want to thank the citizen who stepped in to comfort the children during this traumatic and tragic incident. Okay, so we'll start by um, Leah Shank, L-E-I-A-S-C-H-E-N-K, founder of Impact, E-M-P-A-C-T. Behind me, I have Sage Crawford's family. We have her mother and her sister. And then we also have another person that's a part of my team behind me as well. Um, just for the purposes of today, the family has requested that we call her Sage Crawford, which was what she preferred to go by. So that's what you'll hear us refer to her as. And that's S-A-G-E Crawford, just like the behind me, C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D. Last Thursday, as you all know, Sage was walking down the street with her two minor children and she was approached by two officers that eventually gunned her down and shot her dead right here where we're standing right now. What we want you all to understand and what we want you to focus on today is that Sage was a mother, she was a daughter, she was a sister, she loved her children, she took the best care of her children that she was able to do with the resources that she had available to her. Irregardless of what the narrative is when it comes to Nevada County Sheriff, we know that whatever the case was here last Thursday, 
Sage did not deserve to be gunned down in front of her children, which is an image that they will never forget. Those children have lost their father. They have now lost their mother. What happened last Thursday is an indication of us as women and how we are not safe, how we are not protected. And when law enforcement is called, they don't come out to help the situation. They didn't come out to see what Sage needed or what she was afraid of. They came out and treated her like a criminal. You're not in trouble or anything like that. They had no regard for the children that they shot over to get to her. No regard for the impact and the trauma that those children will live with for the rest of their life. They had no regard for that. They have no regard for this family standing behind me as they have not given them answers. This family has traveled all the way up from Southern California. This family loved their daughter, their sister. She was somebody that was loved. And irregardless of any mistakes we make in life, any, regardless of any adversities we have in life, because we've all had them, none of us deserve to be shot and murdered in front of our children. And that's what I want you all to remember, because that's what happened here. There was no de-escalation, none. And although we have not been privy to whatever video it is they have, they told us it's not ready yet. Well, what's that mean? Why does the video have to get ready? Whatever you have, we want to see it. We want to see it just as it was taken. We don't want it to be doctored. We don't want it to be manipulated in any way. We want to see it exactly the way it is. And I have a personal message to Moon here in this county, who did her press release, who did her video and posted on social media and never once mentioned the children. Never once. No regard. No respect. Good afternoon, Nevada County. I am your Sheriff Shannon Moon. As you may know, yesterday your sheriff's office was involved in a deputy-involved shooting in Alta Sierra. This was a rapidly evolving incident that unfortunately led to the loss of a young lady's life. Each and every day, our staff are called on to respond to situations that ha can have unpredictable outcomes. We take that responsibility very seriously, and when tragic events occur, they impact everyone, including our staff and their families. Immediately following the incident, I requested that the Nevada County District Attorney's Office conduct the formal investigation into the incident. This is to ensure the investigation remains independent from the Sheriff's Office. This investigation will include taking statements from multiple witnesses, reviewing any available video footage, as well as an in-depth analysis of the forensic evidence located at the scene. I ask that you have patience with the investigative process as the highly skilled detectives from the district attorney's office with the assistance from the Grass Valley Police Department and the Truckee Police Department work diligently to recreate the events that occurred Thursday afternoon. We will also conduct our own complete review of the deputy's actions based on our policies and procedures. In the coming weeks, my office will publicly release video and or audio that may help to describe this incident while it will not change the outcome. It will provide the transparency that your Sheriff's Office is committed to. Based on standard policy, the two deputies involved have been placed on administrative leave. They are Deputy Caleb Todarian with four and a half years of service and Deputy Matthew Harrison with four years of service to Nevada County. We have received numerous questions as to their well-being and I am thankful that neither of them have physically been injured during this incident. Finally, I'd like to thank the many residents of Alta Sierra, including several that stopped to assist us. I am aware of the significant inconvenience this created in your neighborhood and appreciate your patience and understanding. That woman was afraid. She was trying to get her children to safety. She knocked on a neighbor's door for help. Why would you call the police on her? She needed help. We've all needed help. Why would you not help her? Why would you call the police on her? And if there was a mental illness situation here, why do you show up with a weapon response? Why is there not the mental illness unit that is here in this county, why did they not show up to help her? Why didn't you shoot her in the leg? Why didn't you shoot her in the arm? Why did you shoot to kill? Those are the questions that we have for Nevada County Sheriff. They say that they deployed a taser. 
we heard that maybe it didn't work, maybe it missed. So to punish her, they then pulled out their gun. The family wants you all to understand that in their grief, they have to somehow get to a place of closure. They have to somehow get to a place to where they can sleep at night. It's inhumane for a mother to lose her child. Our lives are not supposed to supersede the lives of our children. It's not normal for us to bury our children. That's not normal. And this family and Sage deserve the dignity of answers and respect as a mother. That's what they deserve. And this community that has not been the most supportive needs to understand that what happened here to Sage could happen to anybody, any of us. None of us are safe. None of us. When they say that police protect and serve, they don't. They don't protect and they only serve their own purpose and their own narrative, which is to show up to shoot and kill. That's what they do. And this is proof. So I want the media to be real careful with what you go back and report because there's a lot of rumors floating around. And I want you to remember that one day her children will read those rumors that you guys are printing about their mother. And they've done enough by way of traumatizing these children. It's not fair. And as all of us have family, we all have children, she deserves dignity like anybody would anyone we are demanding access to this camera whatever the video is we also want to know why there's no body cams because that was supposed to be implemented as well already in this county they have the money for it they were supposed to have body cams why don't you have them that could have told us a whole nother story whatever the dash cam video why are you taking so long to get it to us whatever the coroner reports show why don't we have them yet these are all the answers that we need, the questions, excuse me, that we need answered. We will take a few questions, but the family at this time is not prepared to answer any and every question. So depending on what you ask, we'll either answer it or we won't, but this is their timing. This is what they're comfortable with. And we are all here right now standing in solidarity with this family and we're gonna do and say whatever it is they want. So just please respect that. saying everything but we can tell you that she did come here from Oregon she had family in Oregon still does and she came down here with her um, her mate that was killed and um, she wanted a homestead she wanted a country life she was a free spirit and she landed upon this area and this is where she wanted to raise her kids anyone else did she live in this air this particular area or forgive me I haven't covered the story before so I don't know all the details, but did she live nearby or did yes. she end up on the street? Yes. So um, I, I can tell you that she there was a situation that she was um, trying to get away from. Um, she was trying to get her kids to safety. There was an unsafe situation with someone that wasn't safe that was around her and her children. And that's what made her kind of walk to safety. And because she had to leave so quickly, she left the children's jacket where they were staying. And that's why she knocked on the neighbor's door, is to ask for money to get her kids a jacket. And instead of them giving them a jacket off their back, is what I would have done, or giving them 20 bucks to go buy a jacket from Walmart, they called the police on them. Anyone else? I'm a mom that lives um, not too far from here. Okay. And what can we do to help you? So we do have a GoFundMe set up, and we'll be posting those links for that. Um, I can also send it to everybody, anybody here that I can just, you know, send it directly to you. Um, obviously, there's there's expenses that are going to come along with any passing that the family is going to need help with, and travel expenses from coming up, you know, from Southern California to here. There's expenses that go along with that too. The children also need to be taken care of, which is the family's number one priority right now, is making sure that the children are safe. 
and and that costs money you know it takes money to do anything so the GoFundMe we can set that up and then um, once they get the funeral arrangements together I know that there won't be a, a public viewing or anything like that but there will be a, a link where you can post cards and well wishes and things like that that could be printed out it could be put in a scrapbook for the kids to have down the line so and we'll be posting about that as well thank you speaking of children are they still with CPS or are they with family they're with family do you know how fast this happened from when the cops got here from what I heard it was within a couple minutes that it was very quick very quick and I, and I want to address something too because you know those of us that um, unfortunately have to deal with this so often. The narrative most times from the police is that they fear for their life. And they've already said that they feared for their life. This is a petite woman that was small and in and, and structure. She was a tiny woman. She was out here with her children. And to think that you're two grown men with weapons, with bulletproof vests on, and to already spin the narrative that you were fearful of her or that you feared for your life, that just goes to show us what we're up against. Because there's no way. There's no way that you could have been fearful from your life from a tiny woman like that. There's just no way. And there's nothing that they did to di disable the situation. Nothing. They just shot her. And, and then they, they asked questions later. So we're not going to blame Sage for her own death. That's what we're not going to do. We're not going to talk about what she might have done because irregardless, it, it, it wasn't warranted, and it's not deserving. It's just not. Nobody should have to go out that way. Nobody should have to ever be killed in front of their children. No children should ever have to witness anything like that. Anything. And that's what the police should be focusing on, too. But they haven't done that. Not once have they asked his family if they need anything. Not once have they asked how the children are doing. They just don't care. And that's what they're trained to do. Kill and not care. And that's why we're here today. So if the neighborhood's upset because we're here, we're upset because we're here. Because who brought us here? The police did. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the police. So everyone here needs to keep that in mind too. We don't want to be in your neighborhood. We don't feel safe. But we're here because they brought us here.